Well, and to put it in another another perspective, maybe guys will understand, if you've ever been in a kitchen and you have a real fine strainer that you're sifting flour through, if I take that same fine mesh strainer, which is like this steel belt in your tire, and I shove a screw through it, I have now changed the way that screen mesh goes together. Can I plug it and it still hold air? Sure. Has it damaged the steel belt in the tire? Absolutely. You change the integrity of the tire. Exactly. Right. On a performance tire. Did you use the cooking analogy because we were just talking about cooking? Absolutely. <laughs> Check it out. That's what we do off camera. We're talking about food. Yeah, better keep your distance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're digging down deep, man. That's how us old school guys do it. You dig down deep. I am hurting today. I apologize. I sound awful. I feel awful. Hopefully, I don't look awful, but it is great to see you guys in what is going to be a Tech Tuesday followed up by your beautiful rides. And it was a week ago today, I was in New Mexico filming our Sunday Coffee with Conti show that you guys saw. We'll talk about that in a second. I want to tell you guys about another great opportunity I was sharing with you recently just before Christmas. That opportunity in the sweepstakes to win two Corvettes and a backyard buddy. Congratulations to Clayton K of Wisconsin who is the winner of that sweepstakes. Here's another wonderful opportunity and this comes on the day after I found out that I'm actually going to the NCM Motorsports Park for E-Ray Corvette training. I'll be driving the E-Ray on the track. Here's the opportunity for you guys to win a brand new E-Ray Corvette. It's compliments of the International Motor Racing Research Center. They're preserving and sharing the history of motorsports and giving you an opportunity to win a 2024 E-Ray. Folks, this is the first time ever we've had this technology, hybrid technology in a Corvette, all-wheel drive Corvette, and you guys can win a brand new 2024 E-Ray. Because you support this channel, use the link in the comments, you're going to get 30% more entries. They draw this the beginning of April, so I'll remind you guys again, but my goodness, click that link in the comments, use RCC30 at checkout, you'll get 30% additional entries and an opportunity to win yourself a brand new 2024 E-Ray. And very soon, we're going to talk more about E-Ray as production is about to ramp up for everybody in the retail world. But you have an opportunity by clicking that link in the comments to win a new E-Ray in April. Use code RCC30 at checkout. Good luck to you guys. What an opportunity. Wonderful to be a part of this. Thank you again for the support of the channel. So I'm sorry if I'm going to be sniffling just a little bit. Uh, bear with me if you would. Yeah, I, I'm that's trying why to, you're over there. I, I, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to keep some composure for you guys. Again, I just got to reflect on last week what we filmed and what we shared on Sunday Coffee with Conti. I'm sorry I stole one of your cigars. I had to have, <laughs> I had to have a little memento from New Mexico. That was such a wonderful trip. I was in and out in less than 24 hours, and I'm still feeling the effects, as you can tell, from that trip. But it was all worth it, man. And Steve, our first customer that we met, I mean, what a wonderful Corvette guy going way back he's on a six corvette wow that was pretty cool rob and his dad going way back he's a corvette guy his whole family's part of it his wife just everybody at the restaurant all excited for him so again if you missed that show that was what i talk about that corvette cheer how we start the new year check out that link please check it out in description i know people are busy they're trying to get their things going in their lives but at some point you want to it's easy to focus on drama in all the craziness. We try to keep it as fun, as real as we can, and I think that video on Sunday is gonna be one of the top five, if not the best for 2024. And we're just getting started, so thank you again to Steve and Rob and everybody that just made incredible, incredible comments on that video. Yep. Now, speaking of last week, some comments were made. You told me not to talk about this, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I, want, I just want to mention it real quick. I just want to clear the air just a little bit, and what our intentions are for Tech Tuesday is to share good information, factual information, but he's using a lot of his you know, heart and gut and soul from experience, and I'm trying to do the same thing with you guys, talking about plugging the tire. There's a lot of mixed comments on that. And I know you people were trying to recite the manual and Michelin said this and this tire manual you could do. You can plug your tire if you want to. And I know we didn't acknowledge it last week. Yes, I know Corvettes have run flat tires, but people forget that's only rated at driving up to 55 miles an hour. Exactly. When's the last time you've been on the damn freeway driving 55? And not very often. No, exactly. And like Chuck said last week, when you do spirited driving, do you want to gamble with that plug letting loose and putting yourself in a bad situation or others in harm's way? So we were, we were kind of going off the beaten path, if you will, and just giving you some good, honest-to-goodness feeling from us 
and advising you because our company as a whole won't plug a performance tire. So we kind of yeah. feel the same sentiments and just we're saying, hey guys, really think about, look at big picture, okay? So I'm not trying to recite manuals to you guys, just trying to think real world. At the end of the day, I think the cost of a few hundred dollars is probably worth it. And somebody made a comment too, they had uh, tire warranties uh, that are accessible when you buy your car. Uh, those are great packages. In fact, I was at dinner with Rob last Tuesday night after we filmed the, uh, the episode, and he says, hey, you know what, I got a nail on my tire. Mm -hmm. He goes, and it's, it's not losing air, what do you think I should do? And I said, hey, you watch Tech Tuesday. He goes, okay, I'll just replace the tire. <laughs> Why gamble? That's all we were trying to say. So some people took that wrong, that we were gearing you in the wrong direction. Uh, sometimes we will just use our opinion. Well, and to put it in another, another perspective that maybe guys will understand, if you've ever been in a kitchen and you have a real fine strainer that you're sifting flour through, if I take that same fine mesh strainer, which is like this steel belt in your tire, and I shove a screw through it, I have now changed the way that screen mesh goes together. Can I plug it and it still hold air? Sure. Has it damaged the steel belt in the tire? Absolutely. You change the integrity of the tire. Exactly. Right. On a performance tire. Did you use the cooking analogy because we were just talking about cooking? Absolutely. <laughs> That's what we do up here when we're talking about food. <laughs> Uh, one more thing I want to talk about, and that's why we're propped in front of this car, and it's really just to bring to light what he does, that he really is looking at these cars before they go back on the lot to resale for you guys at a used capacity. But what I deal with when I'm trying to take the car in and trade, and how many times have the violin coming out and it's like, hey, this car's never seen rain, it's never been wet, it needs nothing. This was one of those night, and it's a very nice, clean car, but in the customer's mind, it needed nothing this sure. 2016 Z06. In fact, listen to this, guys. This is what this clean car, from aesthetically looking at it, you would assume it needed nothing, but what did it need? Well, after we do the used car inspection, they get an oil change, obviously. Yep. The cabin filter was dirty, needed replaced. Yes. Both rear rims were bent, had to be straightened out, the tires balanced. Yep. Uh, had a tri uh, slight transmission shutter, so we're going to replace all the transmission fluid to get rid of that. Okay. Uh, the belt because it's a, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it was a 16, so it doesn't have the new fluid from It doesn't 19. have the new fluid, correct. Okay. Uh, the belt tensioner was leaking, needed replaced. Uh, every time you started the car up, it'd come up on the driver information, said low battery because somebody had put a battery in the car before it got here and broke one of the wires back there. That had to be repaired. Uh, the passenger door rattles, the steering's off a little bit, and the right rear side marker light didn't work. So, Needed nothing. Yeah. But now to she's ready at, to go. Well, it will be when I'm done. But yes, to look at the car, it looked like it was ready for the showroom. And I put this out there on Instagram and Facebook, and I told you guys it's 69 and some change, just under 70 grand it still doesn't affect that price. What a great value, great opportunity. As soon as he's done with this car, if you're interested in that, let me know. Speaking of selling cars, if we can do that just for a second, a little toot toot if you will. Uh, I do have a Stingray allocation coming up on this Thursday. I'll do a quick video talking about constraints, but we have a lot of people to get a hold of. We have a lot of allocations available. I might have one for you. If you're in the market looking to custom order your 2024 Stingray, please reach out to me. I'd love to do business with you guys. I really do appreciate that opportunity. and hopefully some good answers that don't cause any controversy for his tech music. Thanks for joining us. Me first? Yeah, go ahead, boss. All right, so it's hopefully you and Chuck can answer our question. I just got a 2024 CA Stingray with a Z51 package. Congratulations. My friend just got a 2024 Z06 with a Z07 package. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. We each have three miles on them. Both of us know the 500-mile restraint as well as the 1,500-mile target before getting on it living in Buffalo, New York, especially this time of year. Our hope is to have a thousand miles on each of our Corvettes. We're going to the MCM bash and want to do the high performance driving, driving track time. We've looked around for an answer. Do we change our oil and filter or do we wait the 7,500 miles or the first service? Appreciate your help and expertise, especially since you do track time. Uh, where you can find a lot of these answers is in the, uh, you can even Google it. You don't even have to go through GM, is the C8 GM track preparation. 
And the last thing it says on the last page of the track rep preparation, it gives you a column of when you're done with track time, it wants you to change the oil. Not necessarily filter, but yeah, they want you to change oil. And I'll put a link in the description of today's video so you can find that track prep guide because there's so much to do depending on what type of track that you're doing. Right. I try to share with you guys a little bit of low speed autocross that I'm doing, but what they're talking about in NCM, that's a high performance track day. Depending on you know how intense you're going to be, they want you to bring the car back to stock, get you get your track alignment, get it back to regular street alignment, all that. There's a lot of procedure to do. There's a lot of cost to occur, but that's part of the hobby of uh, Corvette, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, any racing that you do is expensive. Yeah, well, I'm learning. <laughs> yes, I'm yes, learning real are. quick. Thank God I got your ass here, though. That's <laughs> for sure. I'm man. a teacher. Uh, that's right, baby boy. All right, here's one. There's a couple of questions here that are of the same nature. Uh, this was on the comment of the video from uh, talking about allocations just last Thursday. So, Rick, two weeks ago, I was told by my Las Vegas, Nevada dealership that I was given one of their allotments. I put money down and my first acceptance to the GM threshold, past waiting, now waiting for the next update from GM. They said delivery could be as early as July. Let me come back to that just in a second. Well, let me address that here real first. Uh, the way I perceived this was is that he said that the order was accepted and it should get the car by July. Your order's not accepted. You have a order that's at 1100 status. It's in pre-order status. You have a GM order number that again means nothing, guys, unfortunately, until it actually is accepted and released for allocation. There's no reason that if you just, a couple of weeks ago, because this is real-time uh, question, sometimes I sit on these for months, but this is a real-time question. If you've got an order that was released and accepted, there's no reason that that order would take until July. Furthermore, in July, you're already into the next model year. We assume, which we're gonna talk about a little bit, I have some concerns on that. We're gonna talk about that in detail on Thursday. So uh, you're at 1100 status. Uh, you should be getting updates from General Motors, updates from your dealership on status uh, uh, as far as the car and the progression of the order. Right now, I don't think your order is anywhere. You might want to verify that. Same thing real quick, if I can just segue into this. He says, Rick, I saw your January allocations video. Do the dealers know if they have allocations for the cycle coming up on the 25th? Yes, I did that video on the 18th. We knew our quantities only. We didn't know the constraint items as far as Z51, non-Z51, gloss black wheels, carbon fiber dash, all that kind of stuff. Again, we'll dissect that for you guys uh, this coming Thursday. It is brain damage, but it is our world that we have to deal in in order getting you past that 1100 status we were just referring to to this previous guy, getting you to accepted status. So he says his dealer didn't know anything about it, and he's heard nothing. He's supposed to be first on their list. He goes, I want to make sure that I'm not being bumped back. Uh, well, the allocations were given out on the 18th. Uh, this is from Todd. Todd, thanks for watching the channel. Uh, if they don't have anything, I think I do have some extra spots. Reach out to me. Email address is up on the screen. I'd love to do business with you guys. As you saw, we were just in New Mexico. We do a ton of business all over the country, but that, and we're going to do more in depth on the order stuff. I know there's more Tech Tuesday, but this is sometimes a good place to air this out sure. uh, in ordering a car. Uh, the misconception is I got an order number and, and how come I'm not getting a production date? Because the order's not accepted. Doesn't sound like your dealer got any allocations. Uh, I, I think they just need to be very candid about that. Um, unfortunately, I've had to deliver much bad news rather than good news, but it allows us to communicate in real time, realistically, as far as expectations for you and I to go forward and have an opportunity to do business. Sometimes people don't mind waiting. The other problem is too, if I can expand on that just because I just thought about it, sometimes you end up doing business with somebody you really don't want to do business with because you've waited so long and you gave them money down. We don't take deposits from you guys. No. But if you gave money to a guy a thousand, five thousand dollars and you're waiting six months to a year or haven't heard anything, the biggest fear is number one, are you going to get the car? When you're going to get the car? But oh my gosh, I don't want to start all over with somebody else. It's not like that everywhere, guys. It really isn't. And I think you're going to see the matrix of order distribution and allocations. I think that's changing and evolving right before our very eyes. More on that as we uh, progress forward into production for 2024 and transition into 25. So uh, both those guys, I hope some of that feedback, just that perspective on what's going on and where you're at, I think you have some questions that you need to ask your local leadership. And if I can help further, please let me know. All right. This one comes from Eugene says great hi Rick. hello rick and chuck greatly appreciate your informative and entertaining videos which must take a lot of time on and off the clock to put together being an informed owner definitely helps enjoy the car even more i configured my pdr on my 2023 htc to automatically record the overwrite old footage when available storage is used up as i feel the footage would be invaluable 
if ever in an accident. Right. My issue is the PDR is recording audio and video message that appears whenever the car is started, even though I've confirmed no audio is recording. Uh, I find it very awkward to explain to my passengers that I'm not recording a conversation, which seems pretty creepy to me. Do all the 23s have this issue? Oh, he's talking about so when, you, when you first started, it yeah. says PDR Comes is up recording. On the radio display. Yeah, says, it says video and audio. Right. I right. think that's just a common thread in all of them. Yeah, it could be just the way the software set up. If you've yeah. confirmed in your settings that you're not, you should be fine. But unfortunately, like you said, to your passenger, it could be a little creepy. It's like, hey, man, what's going yeah. on? I don't right. want to. I don't want to be recorded. Exactly. Sometimes it's good to have that audio on there, though. Yeah. You know, it really is. Uh, I've got just one more. Um, it's hard for me to talk and even see right now. So thanks for bearing with me uh, tonight. Thanks again for the questions, and we'll try to do some more for you guys next week. Uh, this came from the 956 area code. I think that's in Texas. Um, to me, maybe just because I'm cranky because I don't feel good, <laughs> but I'm just frustrated at dealers not doing their freaking job, man. <sighs> And we don't mind helping you guys, but sometimes, sometimes, man, I, I, I don't know. So anyways, Rick, I'm in need of some help. I got a 2023 3LT Z51 Corvette. I purchased this used. We were talking about this off camera, and I knew this was going to start to cycle in. It was an uncertified vehicle through all Cadiz, Texas, on Dallas, Texas. Uh, car drives like a dream, but I've tried to get information on the services that have been done so far. I want to have things looked at that may not have been done. No one seems to have a record of what's been done. Mind you, I'm the third owner of this Corvette, and I would hate to have my transmission or something expensive go out due to the lack of maintenance that I'm unaware of. And I told him to go in and have your service writer look at the vehicle history, investigate vehicle history. Right. And they said they couldn't pull up anything. I'm super slammed trying to get back to people and get business going and get this year going. It's like the worst January in the history of my career. It took me 15 seconds to put it in there and I got three pages of data on there on the car. So why couldn't your local leadership do that? Man, oh man, I'm sorry for that, man. I, and I understand your frustration. But it's just ridiculous that we have to go through that. Did he buy it used from his local dealer? Yes. Oh, well, then they should. Yeah, I thought maybe he took it somewhere where he didn't buy it. No, no. He did a lot of that. And oh, he was, you didn't buy it here. Take it back where you bought it. No, and that's <laughs> stupid because service is service, sales is sales. Exactly. Service gets paid to fix the car. Who gives a damn? Work? Probably 40, 50 percent of what you work on is stuff that wasn't bought here. Exactly. And, and you still get paid to work on it, right? I do. Okay, case in point. Anyways, uh, he looked at a Carfax report. So I guess if it's an agency that does work on the car and reports to Carfax, you'll have a record of that. Right. I didn't see any record in here. I was finding stuff that they replaced the brake master cylinder, uh, re, you know, reprogramming the engine control module, uh, a right control switch was replaced. I mean, I found all this stuff, but didn't find anything on the maintenance. So if it's done at a Chevy dealership, that would show here, correct? Well, yeah. Does it show his first service? It does not, show the, does not show the first service ever being done. Yeah, but like you said before, customer pay stuff may not show in the yeah, GM report. The first service GM pays for. It. Right. So the GM, yeah, so I'm saying that didn't show here. So I don't right. think it's ever been done. So I guess the advice I would have for you in that situation, because he had uh, 28,500 miles on the car already for a 2020 that's now into its fourth year, is just go get the whole service done and then just, you know, do your due diligence to keep record of what you're doing going forward for your 7,500 mile intervals and things of that nature. Sure, and I've had people buy UC7 and stuff from other places and bring them here and ask me my opinion. And I tell them my honest opinion, look, if you don't know what's been done to the car and you can't find out what's been done with the car, I recommend them flushing. Let's just start over right? from here out. I'll do all your flushes, do all your maintenance, and we'll start fresh from here, and then you'll have every five years after that. You at least know under prepared. your ownership yes. how you've maintained then and cared for the Then you know that everything was done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because no kind of the other yeah, anything done customer pay, there'll be no record of, unless, like you said, somebody is using Carfax or something like that that reports it. Yeah, so, so it's, it's really iffy on that, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, you know, for privacy laws, you can't contact the previous owners. No. You know, and, I, and as a previous owner, I want anybody contacting me either. So there's really no way you do have to become reliant, I guess, on the communication with the dealership, and unfortunately, he's not he's not getting any. So sure. hopefully that gives you a little insight, and uh, at least you said that you're enjoying the car, and the car's driving well, so uh, continue to do so. But like Chuck and, Chuck and I just said, start over at zero, just get everything done and keep going forward, but keep records of it. In the back of the uh, owner's manual, there is some blank pages you can start marking down your service intervals and dates and mileage and that kind of stuff too. Don't forget every 7,500 miles, you want to rotate the tires, you know, side to side, front, side to side, and the back as well, and that'll help you as well. Yep.
All right, this one comes from Anthony. It says, not driving my C8 as much since January, a couple days a week, but with the snow, car's in the garage on the charger. Does it harm the car if I take the charger off one day and then put the charger back on another day and do this a couple of times as I'm able to drive it? Uh, if you're using the GM plug-in charger, or really any charger, no, it don't hurt it. So okay. Charge it and, yeah. Fantastic. Get it out and drive it. Yeah. <laughs> when you can. I know. Here, this January is going to be 60 degrees, I think, by the end of the week. Yeah. Yeah, winter's over. <laughs> if you're putting the clamp chargers on, make sure it's always red on first, black on last, black off first, red off last. Yeah, good. I'm glad you made that point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one comes from Dale. It says, I have a 23 C8 coupe. Love the car and your videos. My question pertains to starting the car after it's been in storage for a while. This was a weird question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't find this in the manual, but if you press the brake pedal and push the accelerator to the floor and then push the start button, the car will turn over without starting. As soon as you let up on the accelerator, the car will start. This seems like a good thing to do for about five seconds or so before starting to get the oil in the engine. Since it's not in the manual, I guess it's not necessary to do, but it seems like a good idea. I was wondering what Chuck thinks of doing this. Okay. That's some old school mindset on that, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what you're doing by holding the accelerator pedal clear to the floor is you're putting what uh, GM calls it in clear flood mode. So it actually turns the injectors off. Like if the car got flooded back in the old days, you know, we knew car get flooded, yeah. get spark plug get covered with the gas. So by holding the accelerator pedal clear down to the floor, the ECM cuts off the injector so no fuel is flowing and they call it clear flood mode. That's why the car won't start. As Soon as you let off the accelerator, it fires. Um, is, is he accomplishing what he's trying to do by well, doing that? Well, I mean, that? He, he's cranking the motor without it starting to hopefully get the oil pressure, get oil pumping through the motors and circulating. I mean, so yeah, he could be accomplishing what he's trying to do. Does it hurt anything? Absolutely not. I don't think you need to do that now with the technology of this new dry sump system. I mean, it's... Well and the only thing I will say to that, for you guys that are changing your own oil in these cars, make sure you're using an AC Delco oil filter oh, because yes. they have a check valve in it to keep some of the oil up in the motor instead of letting it all flow back into the pan and into the dry sump tank. That's why GM recommends AC Delco oil filters. They do have a purpose other than GM just trying to sell oil filters. So, See, another good point. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Thanks again for watching and listening, guys. Really appreciate the support. A quick one, very direct on constraints and ordering for 2024 coming up Thursday. As soon as I feel a little bit better, I want to talk about a video of future Corvette stuff and stuff that I want to know if you guys would buy it. That will prompt a lot of engagement and a lot of comments, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Right now, I'm looking forward to you guys enjoying your cars that you sent in. Chuck, what are these? Your beautiful rides. They are awesome this week. Thanks again, guys. <laughs>
Let's hit the long road Thought I'd be better on my own Sometimes what's right is wrong instead Cause I was too young And I didn't understand that You are no one And I can't wait to see you again Oh And I didn't understand that you were the one. And I 